Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, David Tare, and this is uh, my first uh, video in a sub-series on derivatives on calculus. So now we're really getting into some real calculus now. Derivatives are, um, are part of calculus. So uh, I just uh, did, did a sub-series on limits with six videos. Uh, limits is kind of preliminary stuff you have to learn um, before you actually do real calculus. But a derivative is something involved in calculus. So now we're going to learn what a derivative is and how to calculate it. So on this slide, I actually have a definition of derivative. I'll get into this more later. This is one of the definitions. Uh, but anyway, let's just get into this. So um, so what is a derivative? Um, first, I have to define what I mean by that. And uh, it turns out that uh, most of the functions you're going to study have what are known as derivatives. Uh, Well-behaved functions have what's called a derivative. And, and roughly speaking, derivative of a function at a given point is just the slope of the function at that point. So really, you can think of derivative as just slope. It's just instead of a line which has a constant slope, most functions have a slope that varies. You know, it changes when you move around the... Uh, graph of the function like we're doing here. And technically, the uh, derivative is really the slope of a line called the tangent line to the function at that point. And tangent line is just the function that just touches the, the graph of the function at a particular point. It touches at one point. It doesn't cross the function. Uh, um, it just uh, it, it's a line with the same slope of the function at that point. Um, anyway, that, that's kind of the intuitive definition of what a derivative is. So it's just the thing, it's the slope, basically. But we have to define it more precisely than that. Here's a precise definition of derivative of a function. So we have some well-behaved function f of x, and we want to evaluate its derivative at some value x equals a. Um, some, some number a, a is just a fixed value of x, a fixed constant if you like. And there's two uh, formulas for it. The first formula, this is the one you usually see, this is f prime of a. We say that's a limit. That's why we need limits here. We take a limit as x goes to zero of the ratio of f of a, a plus h minus f of a uh, over h. And there's another way we can write this. We can write this as the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. All we're doing in the second formula is we're writing x instead of a plus h. Remember, x is a variable. x can be anything we want as long as it's in the domain of the function. So we might as well let it be a plus h. And I think the second formula looks a little bit more intuitive. You can kind of see that this is the slope of a line if you look at this function. It's just the line that connects the points, uh, um, I guess, with uh, x coordinates uh, a and x and and y coordinates f of a and f of x. Uh, and here's a picture just so you can see better what's going on. So, you know, they say picture's worth a thousand words. So um, here's your function. Here's just some arbitrary function, which we're writing as y equals f of x. Um, and uh, what we do is we can, uh, we, can, uh, we can take two points on this function. We start with x comma f of x, that's our starting point. We end up with x, x plus h comma f of x plus h, where h is some just some constant. We're, we're letting h go to zero, but we're starting with a pretty big value of h here. So we take those two points, and then we form a chord. We just form a line, a line segment connecting those two points. And uh, we know from high school algebra how to calculate slopes of lines. So we have a line, uh, a, li a line segment with a starting point and an ending point. You know how to calculate its slope. This is delta y over delta x, which in this case is f of x plus h uh, minus f of x uh, divided by x plus h minus x, but x plus h minus x is just h. So that gives you this formula. And we're not quite done. We have to take the limit of this slope as, uh, as h goes to zero. So we keep... Uh, taking shorter and shorter chords, and in the limit, we get we get the tangent line. So you can you extend this line infinitely far in both directions. We don't have to end it at the at the endpoints. We can make it go as far as we want. If we do that, when we make these points uh, on the graph get closer and closer to each other, 
and the limit in which h goes to zero, we get the tangent line. That's kind of how you define the tangent line. It's also how you can find the derivative. So that's what the derivative is. Uh, anyway, and uh, I think, uh, and here's here's a nice picture. Uh, somebody did this calculation. I think there's some app on the computer. There's a lot of apps you can use to estimate derivatives. And here we have some function. Uh, looks like a cubic polynomial. I'm not sure exactly what the function is. Doesn't really matter. But uh, you, you see they're doing kind of the same thing here. We're trying to estimate the uh, the derivative of the function at some point, I guess, around x equals, uh, looks like around 3, 3.2, something like that. So you take two points in the neighborhood of uh, that value of x. I guess you're starting at, what, 2.4, it looks like. Uh, and then you're taking some big value of h. It looks like they're letting h equal 2 here. So they're taking a pretty big value of h. And then they're just using the slope of this uh, chord, uh, the line with a chord connecting a. Uh, um, a comma f of a and a plus h comma f of a plus h. That gives you a slope. And I guess the slope of this line turns out to be minus 0 0.39. Notice it's negative. And that's kind of an estimate of the derivative. Not a very good estimate because you have to let the chord get a lot shorter to get a better estimate. But you get the idea, I think. And I think I'm just going to finish by actually uh, doing a, a concrete example here. Uh, so usually you don't want to calculate derivatives this way, but when you're first learning about derivatives, it is useful to use the definition in terms of limits to calculate it. So here's an easy function. I'm just going to do f of x equals x squared. That's just a parabola. And I'm going to calculate the derivative of f of x at a, for any arbitrary value of x. Uh, and I'm not going to write a here. I'm just writing x. So... Uh, I'm going to get a formula for f prime of x. This can be, you can think of x as a particular value of x if you want. Uh, um, you can also think of the derivative. You don't have to think of it as a slope at a particular point. You can think of it as another function. If you like, it's the function whose value is the slope at every point. So that's what we're doing here. We're calculating f prime of x using the definition in terms of limits. So let's just do it. So here's the definition, f prime of x is equal to the limit as x goes to h of the ratio f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now we have to plug in what f is. f of x is x squared. So f of x plus h is f of x plus h quantity squared minus x squared over h. And now we just use the binomial theorem to expand uh, x plus h quantity squared. That's easy. It's just x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then we subtract out x squared. You'll notice that we get two terms that equal to x squared that cancel. So when we cancel those terms, we just get the ratio 2xh plus h squared all over h. Now I think you'll notice that in the numerator, we have two terms both divisible by h, so we can factor out h from the numerator. We're just left with 2x plus h. We're taking the limit of that as h goes to 0. Well, that's easy now. Notice that 2x does not depend on h. So that just stays 2x, and h as h goes to 0 is obviously 0. You can just plug in 0 if you like. And when you're done with that, you get 2x. So we've just proven, using the, uh, the definition of the derivative, that the derivative of the function x squared, y equals x squared, if you like, the parabola y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared, its derivative is equal to 2x. Pretty nice. And it turns out there's a much easier way you can do this, which we'll learn um, pretty pretty soon. But it's good to do, like I said, it's good to do a few examples using the definition until you see how everything works. And then you learn a bunch of rules to make life a lot easier. But anyway, uh, this wasn't too bad, this example. So that concludes my video for tonight on derivatives, uh, definition of derivative. Thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time.